Hi, everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. I'm glad on this episode to be talking with author Christopher Sequera. Uh, Christopher, you, you have written books in my life for many, many years now, from Justice League Adventures to uh, Star Trek Halloween, Halloween, which has been just one of the most fun comics experiences I've had this year uh, and lots of things in between. You've been writing, editing and creating for some time. So delighted to be talking with you. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me on, sir. Thank you. And um, I'm, I'm really pleased that you liked uh, Halloween uh, so much. Um, uh, as you were telling me before we came on, you um, have a background in teaching high school English. Mm -hmm. So I, I suspect all the literary background elements to Star Trek Halloween would have appealed to you. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I love the, the ways that the stories trace in. Yeah. And this is my own holodeck back here. This is, of course, not real, but um, there would be certainly lots of comics back there were it real. Yeah. Uh, A familiar feeling. <laughs> uh, lots of so much creativity in that book and uh, very curious to talk with you about your approach in writing your collaborations your editing um, curious about what it is in storytelling that's drawn you in as a as a creator and as a voice yeah, I mean I guess um, my interest in writing fiction um was uh, developed simultaneous with my interest in comics. I read comics when I was a little kid. And um, in fact, I recall quite vividly myself and my um, brothers sitting around the kitchen table making our own comics. We'd get, you know, sheets of um, copy paper and uh, punch a couple of staples down the side and we just start drawing and, and writing on page one till we'd filled up a, you know, a, a 12 or 20 page uh, thing. And we would just do this for hours, particularly in school holidays. We would just do this for hours. We'd just, yeah, do this with, um, um, we call them biros. What do you call them? Um, ball, ballpoint pens. Um, <laughs> and we just, we just sat on page one and we just, you know, make the story up page by page, imitating, I guess, comics and cartoons and things that, uh, that we'd uh, seen. So, uh, yeah, so storytelling was uh, very much uh, visual storytelling for me when I st started uh, with the humble aspects of it when I was a little kid. Oh, love it, love it. Do those uh, pages still exist somewhere? Oh, look, on? sadly, no, they're long, long gone. I think my mother, my late mother, kept them for a while, but where they went, you know, over the decades... No idea, which is a bit of a shame, but that's okay. I, yeah. I'm doing slightly, I'm doing slightly better material now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm sure, and uh, the the process and the growth is always fun as well. Indeed, indeed. So, uh, yeah. So, um, as I got older, I wanted to um, create fiction, particularly genre fiction, and I was particularly a fan of the the, the horror and science fiction genres. Uh -huh. um, I did what people do, which is yeah, start writing my own short stories. And uh, that bug stayed with me and uh, the interest in comics stayed with me. And um, it just uh, became a professional itch that I wanted to scratch. So I started, you know, sending samples to, to various places, including the mainstream publishers. Uh -huh. And uh, got some nibbles here and there from time to time. And so if I got a gig, I would yeah, execute the gig. Um, Justice League Adventures was was an early American one. Um, and then I did something, actually, I did a three-pager. Was it three? A three-pager for, um, uh, for, the, for the great Mr. Paul Levitz for the 9-11 um, the Artists Respond book that DC oh. Comics put out. Oh, I did no. with uh, the Canadian Tom Grummet illustrated that story and uh that was uh, i think i might have seen print before justice league adventures because of although I, I, the, the the justice league script was in and approved and being drawn i think around about that time so that was interesting um so i've done a couple of things for dc i did a couple of things for marvel did an iron man story for marvel did a mm -hmm. x-men versus x-men versus vampires story for for uh, marvel which is cool because i got to scratch the horror itch as well as the superhero itch. Uh -huh. um, 
and I did a I did some stuff for Boom Studios. I did a Cthulhu tale story for Boom mm -hmm. Studios. Uh, I co-wrote a two a part story with uh, my friend Mark Wade for that um uh, the comic book the Dynamite did of the old nineteen forties um pulp character the Avenger the dude with the white face and the malleable skin who could disguise himself as anyone we did that that was fun yeah and yeah bits and pieces here and there i've done comics in australia with there's a, a company that does a lot of phantom comics here i did some stuff for them i did some stuff for a smaller company called black house uh, my own take on um or i say my own but this was actually a co-creation um by another buddy of mine dave elsie who's an academy award-winning horror makeup guy Mm -hmm. uh, he approached me with the kernel of an idea for a Sherlock Holmes movie and said, but I'm not a writer, Chris, can you turn this into something? And we turned it into something. And then a comics publisher that was around here, Black House Comics, they asked us to do a variation on that for a comic book. And we did about eight or 10 issues of that. Uh -huh. might, bring that back. might bring that back with IPI Comics next year, but I'll get to IPI Comics later. So, yeah, I'm just here and there and everywhere. If I can do comics, I do them. But uh, a lot of stuff has been in the short story space and uh -huh. also commissioning and editing other people's work on short stories. And I've also yeah. edited a few novels uh, for people as well. So, uh, but yeah, and we're always talking mystery, science fiction, fantasy and horror. Edited uh -huh. a few. Um, the, the other thing with, my, with the mystery stuff, I've got a really fanatical interest in Sherlock Holmes. So I've done a couple of Sherlock Holmes anthologies. Sherlock Holmes, um, the Australian case book was a massive hardcover that uh, was, was a fairly uh, big selling thing back here in 2018, I think it was. And um, Sherlock Holmes and Doctor Was Not was a science fiction anthology, which had some um, very fun stories in it. And, um, the premise for that one I made up was um, uh, what if Sherlock Holmes's best friend, roommate, and biographer was a doctor, uh -huh. but not Dr. Watson? So it could be any doctor from literature or history. So we had Dr. Jekyll, we have Doc Holliday, the, the late Denny O'Neill, one of my writing heroes, yeah. used to write and edit Batman comics for decades. Um, Denny wrote the um, Sherlock Holmes meets Doc Holliday story, and it was just brilliant. And uh, out of that, uh, I formed a friendship with Denny in the last few years of his life and with his son, Larry, which I, I, I still have a you know, fantastic thing. Um, and, and as one can expect from a Denny O'Neill story, it was great. <laughs> it was just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. lovely, lovely. And I, I imagine it's rewarding to step into the role of editor that way and forge those relationships, but also create spaces for people to share stories. Indeed. Indeed. It's uh look, look, I love both um, getting the opportunity to work in a professional capacity with somebody whose work I already admire, but I also love discovering new voices and, and, put, you know, giving them stuff to do and uh, giving them a, a, an opportunity to, uh, um, participate in, in, in an anthology or other project. And uh, I'm, I'm doing it even more with IPI Comics, which is starting up early next year uh, in terms of, you know, approaching some people and saying, would you like to write a comic book series? Or uh, um, in some cases, um, we had a very specific thing where we go, would you be interested in writing a comic book? on this subject matter and the people have gone, yes. And would you be interested in working with this artist or have you got your own artist you want to bring into it or an artist would come to us. So uh, well, a few different variations, but that's a hell of a lot of fun too, especially when the conversations tend to revolve around their subject matter favorites uh -huh. uh, and their, and their interests and the kind of stories that they want to do, because you know, that's where the beautiful stuff is going to come from. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've also done a project like that about Dracula as well. Is that right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, following on from Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Wozniak, we did uh, Dracula Unfanged. And it was basically, I thought, 
Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson was like our what if parallel universes where there's a different situation for Holmes and everyone. Uh -huh. What's another great um, character that everyone loves and that I love that you could do something fun with? And I thought straight away of Dracula, probably my favorite character in fiction. And so the conceit this time was what if Dracula was a centuries old menace to humanity uh -huh. but but not because he was a vampire because of some anything else it could be a a, um, a werewolf a zombie a, a bad idea a anything you know? and uh, we end up with some terrific stuff one guy had him as a um jason frank's brilliant writer had him as a um silicon valley cult leader uh -huh. um <laughs> Somebody else uh, had him as almost like a god of the green of of nature, uh -huh. uh, like 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 an imp imp of nature. Uh, so we had all different takes on that, and uh, they, they were terrific too. Um, you, you clearly have a love of classic characters and storylines that have been around for a while. Uh, love that, and I love that thread that you also mentioned with Halloween as well. Yes, I mean, with, with Halloween, it was a case of um, I'd been talking to uh, Heather Antos, the editor over there at IDW on the Star Trek books, and there was a project, which I am sworn to secrecy, that Mark Wade and I were going to do for IDW. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right? But it involved another very big piece slash player, and it got all approved. It was my idea. Uh, and I asked if Mark would come in and co-write it with me, and they said yes, because well, they're not stupid. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. And um, and because uh, I knew it was something Mark would dig, and we came up with a, a concept and an outline, and it got through the approval process at first, but then it sort of stalled, uh, probably more in the corporate space than anywhere else. But that's okay. Yeah, these things happen. Yeah. Now it's probably dead forever, but yeah, you know, or it may get revived at no notice at all. But who knows? But, um, yeah, it, it had begun a conversation with myself and Heather, and um, there was an opportunity uh, where she was looking for some pictures at that particular time mm -hmm. after this thing, after this thing got, got shelved. And I sent her three ideas, and she came back to me about a week or so later, and she said, and I was thinking, oh, I hope she might like one of them. And she came back and said, oh, Paramount's approved the second one, we're doing it. And I went, what? <laughs> that, was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> and yeah. yes, it, it's it's sold on the strength of a of a one or two sentence. And look, I I don't think it was genius in the idea. Uh, I think it was one of those ideas. If I didn't do it, somebody else would. But it was great for me to be come up with it first, and then go, how would I do this? Because for me, Jason. The only way to do that idea is to go full on mm -hmm. and to go, right, well, if it's going to be Halloween on the holodeck, it needs to be you know, an absolute monster mash. Yes. Uh -huh. And and then that presents you with, with a couple of different options. And I'll try not to say too much about it for, for people who haven't picked it up yet because there's a trade paper about coming next year mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, the first crossing... Uh, uh, dissection of the pathway was okay. Are we going to have a bunch of characters like the good guys on there, you know, the the Enterprise crew, or some bad guys? Are we going to have them adopting the guise of famous classic monsters? Uh -huh. uh, whether uh -huh. we didn't go universal, we went classic literary because universal is a, a licensed thing. So, and there's plenty of space in the in the in the classics public domain anyway. So it was a case of, is it the bad guys in that kind of appearance or is it our good guys? And then if it's our good guys, well, then what do we do there? Um, are they just pretending to be, you know, to, to, do, uh, to trick or frighten some alien or something? Uh, and or is it something far more complex and, and uh, with, it, with, with some more unique problems for them? And that's the way I went. I went the other, that path. Uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. and, and also I wanted it to be the emotional heart of the story. What would it be like for these characters 
uh, particularly Deanna Troy, who's our point of view character. That she's she's a point of view character from page one of the first issue. Uh -huh. uh, what would it be like um, to be swept up in that world of the genre of the sort of classic outsider monster characters of of literature? Uh -huh. uh, and that and that was the pathway we went on. So, um, and uh, and that was where we wanted to go. Wanted to go with, um, you know, the visuals. You know, they 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 have some very inspiring visuals. These characters, uh, yeah, aided and abetted by decades of um, Universal monster movies or ha or Hammer horror films, which is which was the next wave in the sixties. Uh -huh. So. Um, and various modern um, iterations thereafter. So yeah, lots of fun. And I got to basically think carefully about how I can actually make that uh, work and not be too crazy. Yeah, yeah. And as I mentioned to Joe Eisman, I won't give anything away, but Data in particular, I love the uh, approach that you took with him. Data tends to be a favorite in those stories of mine anyway, but I, but I love the direction that that character went in as well. Thanks. He ended up having quite a, an important role in the story, and that was kind of good on two levels. One is because of yeah, his android nature, different mm -hmm. things can happen involving him um, that can't happen to the other characters. But also, his, you know, if the story is about horror and fear and, and the reaction that it inspires, in in a person, it's great to have data in in that mix because of course he doesn't feel those emotions, uh -huh, so he uh -huh. becomes a he becomes a really interesting counterpoint. You know, he, he he almost becomes, you know, in one sense, oh, he's 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 invulnerable to the 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 largest attack of fear, uh -huh. uh, and he's um and yet you know he becomes quite significant in the story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You mentioned Mark Wade as a collaborator. That's that's quite a collaborator. That's quite a friend. Uh, he, is, he is. We've been mates for about ten years. He's just the the loveliest human being. A very um, a kind and uh, generous pal has, has been a, a good pal to me over the years. Wonderful. Yeah, I, I love to ask about those positive collaborations and the folks that you enjoy working with most. Look, I've been very lucky. I mean, editors have all different styles and collaborators of all different styles. I, I've collaborated on even editing anthologies with people like uh, um, Bryce Stevens and Steve Probosh, who are a couple of writer editors down here. Another guy I'm working on on a couple of really cool books right now, Steve Paulson. We're doing a Nosferatu book and we're doing a um, Cthulhu book for next year. And that those books are looking great. So yeah, it's always a joy when you have the sensibilities click and you can form a, a good working relationship and figure out what um, how to share the workload most effectively. Whether it, you know, sometimes you just do half each, sometimes you go, okay, well these are your strengths and these are my strengths. Do you want me to go off and do a bit of that? And you can do a bit of this, and you know it'll be more effective. Okay. It, it's always interesting, and of course, comics writing is just pure collaboration. Yeah, yeah, very cool, very cool. Uh, curious about what it's like to go from uh, comics to prose with the anthologies or or the writing side, however you want to approach that, as well as I believe you've also worked in film. A little bit in film. I did some script advisement to my brother Jonathan, who worked on a, a fairly popular rock documentary um, about a uh, sort of the, the greatest proto-punk band in Australian history, which is a band called Radio Birdman. They're still actually still around. They're, they're still revered here today. They're Aussie Rock Hall of Fame winners. Uh, and so I did a bit of script advisement on that. I've done a couple of sh short uh, films with, with Jonathan here and there that haven't been distributed widely. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, um, I've done a little bit of screenplay stuff more in the um, helping people with development uh, here and there, uh -huh. uh, and that's a lot of fun. Um, there are a couple of projects of mine that are floating around. Um, you know, in, in the in the maybe they'll they'll get picked up, uh, and, um, but because the uh, the budgets for those things you know are so much bigger, um, less frequently do those opportunities come along. We have a very small, if not almost non-existent, genre industry in Australian film 
Um, they could be larger because of the expense, uh, but um, as that sort of changes, as production starts to improve over the years, with the with the the lower cost of production for doing the the special effects, etc., that genre film requires, we'll probably see more of that here. Mm. Nice, nice, yeah. And, and may the the projects that you have out in the world, may there be some green lights there as well. Oh, look, it, it's always great when that happens. Um, I've got a something being looked at by by one company now that um, is is actually um, an unpublished anthology that Steve Proposh and I worked on is actually being read by someone who's a, a, a major producer. He uh -huh. asked if it, I asked if it was his cup of tea because as, as I knew him, and he said, "Oh, it's on that subject matter. Send it over now." So we did, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of my, my one of my comic projects is is uh, being looked at by someone else. And so look, it's nice if it happens, but I, I'm quite relaxed if it doesn't. You know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, curious. My my last official question is usually about projects to come uh as well as spaces where people can follow along so that's that's what i have on my list and then we can hit anything that we might have left out that you want to make sure to mention okay look, look, look the big thing people will find um is at ipicomics.com the mm -hmm. letter i the letter p the letter i comics.com all one word ipicomics.com and that is the um i'm playing a role of editor-in-chief for a new comics line that first releases are going to be in, on shelves uh, in all your comic shops over there and the same ones and the comic shops here in March next year. We've got, um, uh, and there's a press release from last week about that there. Uh, and we're going to be, it's, it's, it's an offshoot of IFWG Publishing, uh, which is a company that's been around for about 13 years doing uh, pros. And, um, the owner of that company, Jerry Huntman, had published several anthologies that I've done or done with other people. And he um, said, look, I want to set up a comics line. So about for the last 18 months, two years, we've been slowly putting the pieces together and we've signed a number of people and we've got them working away and whatnot. And uh, so you'll see some information about the projects there and there's some really cool things there. Uh, but probably the exciting one for long time traditional American superhero comic book fans is we've got a, a character called the human fly, which was a 19 issue Marvel comic in 76 and 77. And mm -hmm. it had this great, ta the great tagline, the wildest superhero of all, because he's real, because he was a masked Canadian stuntman that did real yeah, event style stunts trying to out evil can evil evil can evil and uh, he was around for about a year year and a half and he disappeared uh anyway the people who own human fly um all the all the um uh property intellectual property um i've known them for a few years and um they were looking at coming back to, to movies and comics and uh, animation and all sorts of things and we've had a conversation and I talked to my boss Jerry and made a deal and now we're doing human fly comics we're planning it's going to be a fresh take as if it's um, starting right in 2024 so the stories will be absolutely contemporary but we are going to absolutely incorporate everything that was going on in 1976 and 77 as well. And people might go, well, how are you going to do that? This guy, this guy must be, you know, very old to be running around doing stunts, but that's all fine. Uh, we're going to keep the anonymity of the character because that's one of the crucial, the way we've, we've figured it out. That now becomes a crucial part of the, the series concept. Uh, so it's going to be pretty cool. Because, so in some ways it's, almost a dot 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 complete and exact continuation of those 19 marvel issues okay. and yet you know decades have passed so we're going to uh, get into that we're going to get into uh, some of the things between the scenes uh, of uh, those old marvel issues but we're gonna it'll be totally new reader friendly you won't have to know any of that stuff uh 
and we want it to be riveting, uh, exciting. We want it to be intriguing. And some of the mystery and other aspects of it, uh, I said to the Fly Guys, because I'm writing the first issue and setting up some of the major pins, and then I've asked uh, another friend of mine, Jim Kruger, the guy who worked on Earth X and Marvels and stuff like that, and Justice at DC. He's uh -huh. going to do the, he's going to do the next art, and a very talented young woman called Dana Brower, B R A W E R, who's written a bit for TV and whatnot. And I think she did some work over at uh, Impact Theory Comics a couple of years ago. Um, she's going to do the third arc, and there'll be a few really really cool guests story contributors here and there uh, we think it's going to be pretty cool but I, I would liken it if I can pull it off off the, the tone I want to get with it uh, are you familiar at all with the old 1960s British television science fiction series called The Prisoner that is familiar I've not seen that in it's, a while it's, it's, it's star, a star, a 17 episodes only it starred a um a uh, TV and movie star of the day called Patrick McGowan, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. who um, he had oh he 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 done a very successful show called Secret Agent Man or AKA Danger Man, mm -hmm. um, and it was a one time it was going to be a James Bond but he turned the role down anyway. That series was really interesting because the history of the character he played, uh, who was called Number Six, his name was never given. Um, his history was only hinted at, scraps here and there, and sometimes contradictory. And it made me think, you don't actually have to know the history of an interesting, heroic protagonist. Uh -huh. You, If you judge them by what they do, not what they said they did in the past. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that would be one of the appeals of doing a human fly comic. It'll be about yeah you know, his um how you relate to him and how you get engaged and follow him along will be not because you see the face under the mask mm -hmm. uh, and not because you know his family history whether he was you know bitten by a radioactive spider and you know swore a vow on his is the over his dead uncle Ben's killer or on his um the, the the rocket from Krypton that brought him out here. It's basically, you'll just judge him on what you see him do now. And that can be just as intriguing. Uh -huh. And I thought, well, that, that'll, be, that'll be a great writing goal for me to have with the series is to prove it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So we're, cool. we're going to have some fun with it. And um, it's going to be, we're, we're, we're going to keep his powers and strength, et cetera, within you normal human um, uh, parameters because there's not much point in a stunt man who's invulnerable. He could be <laughs> you know, well-trained and very smart and very, very strategic and have gadgets uh, and think three or four moves ahead of his opponents. But, um, you know, if, if he's you know, invulnerable, he's not going to be very exciting as a stunt man if, if he's at no risk. True. Very true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, excited to see uh, IPI Comics in that line and excited to see the continuation of the human fly. And it sounds like many more things to come. Yeah, look, I'm really lucky because it's a it's a dream gig writing, getting to write uh, some titles for IPI myself. But in actual fact, just as much enjoyment in seeing some of these projects come to life. You know, we've got it. We've got a, a, a reinvention of Frankenstein by, by Jason you know, Franks, uh, strange coincidence of the surname there. Um, mm -hmm. we've, got a, we've got a really fresh, and I say this you know, with all sincerity, because um, I've read a million vampire stories, but we've just got this really fresh take on vampires by Alan Phillipson and Nancy Holder illustrated by the brilliant John K. Snyder, who did Dr. Midnight at DC several years ago, fashion uh -huh. in action, all, the, all this cool stuff. I think he's doing some Green Lantern covers at the moment for DC. Uh -huh. um, they're doing a, yeah, a classic. So, um, and we've got a clever thing with Hannibal, uh, the Conqueror, um, and, and in a uh, sword and sorcery context. 
Um, so we've got some some nice things developing over the next couple of years uh, and um, a whole bunch more I can't announce yet. Uh, but um, that's that's part of the, the, the fun of this is I'm getting to see writers and artists hook up together and, and uh, come up with magic. And uh, that's just delightful. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I, I love the the stories that you share, and I love that you also, as I mentioned, you create these spaces for other people to create as well. Um, so wonderful, wonderful things. Um, Christopher, thank you so much for taking the time. Did we miss anything that you want to make sure to share before no, we close? I think, you, I think you've got the guts of it, of, of what, particularly what's uh, recent and what's coming up. And, uh, yeah, absolute pleasure to talk to you, sir. Yeah, great to talk with you as well and glad to talk anytime. Excellent stuff. All right, you you enjoy the rest of your evening, and I shall enjoy the rest of my Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks so much. All right, take care. Bye. Bye.